this is Fort Peck Reservoir. And if you look across the lake, you can see kind of rolling grassy hills. And then as you get further up the hill, then you see uh, Badlands. That's the Hell Creek Formation. But not everything you see out here is the Hell Creek Formation. The rolling hills that have grass on them, the green and the trees and so forth, and the, from the lake up to the Badland area, that is what we call the Bear Paw Shale. When that was being deposited, there was actually an ocean here. And animals like mosasaurs and plesiosaurs lived in that ocean. One of the really crazy things to think about Montana is that, uh, well, between about 100 million years ago and 65 million years ago, you would have found much of Montana submerged beneath the waters of a shallow inland sea that we call the Western Interior Seaway. So essentially, this, this large seaway split North America into what would have been sort of two halves, if you will, a western North America where the Rocky Mountains were rising at that time, and then more of a lower lowland area of eastern North America. The result here in Montana was that the shoreline of that seaway would either get would either move to the west as the sea got sea level got higher, or it would move to the east as sea level got lower. But within that seaway were a variety of different types of marine reptiles, which uh, has been the focus of my research. It's good if you're skeptical and you say, now wait a minute, how do you really know we had oceans in Montana, or if I should say more properly, seas in Montana uh, 70, 80 million years ago? Well, the evidence is, is all around you um, in a variety of forms. If you walk through parts of especially central eastern Montana, and you're out walking in areas, the Badlands areas, that are made up of bluish to grayish shale rock. That shale started out as mud deposited on the floor of this shallow seaway. The sediment, this mud and silt and sometimes sand, was deposited on the floor of this seaway. And along with it, of course, buried in those layers of rock, are the marine animals that were swimming in that seaway. So we have a variety of animals like... Uh, Ammonites, for example, these are very definitely animals that lived in the sea. They're a type of a, a relative of squid and octopus and nautilus that are alive today. But these are all extinct, and these ammonites um, had a, sort of a tentacly head coming out here. And these are very clear evidence that marine settings were certainly here at one time. Of course, these types of animals were preyed upon by animals like the mosasaur behind me, and the plesiosaurs and the ichthyosaurs and even marine crocodilians. Another interesting thing that we find in the marine rocks in Montana, uh, rarely, but we do have records of them uh, from the seaway in some places better than others, are of actual animals that weren't marine animals, but the, the things flying above, flying reptiles or pterosaurs, were uh, an important part of the landscape during the age of dinosaurs. And what's interesting is many of these presumably fed on fish and other types of marine life. And when they died, they crash landed into the ocean. And the remains were preserved in the bottom of the ocean in seafloor sediments. Fish were found in abundance, for sure. We had a lot of different types of bony fish. In fact, the Cretaceous is pretty interesting because some of the largest bony fish we know of from that time were... 12, 13, 14 feet or more in length. And that's a pretty big fish. And even some of those fish have been found with the remains of other large fish inside of them, sort of fish in a fish. Then you have to actually potentially be in a, in a, in a unit of rock that reaches the Earth's surface and then is exposed through erosion and modern-day weathering so that part of your skeleton starts to stick out of the rock and someone happens to happen along and find your bones weathering out of those rocks and then you can be discovered as a skeleton. So if you think about it, uh, while we have a great collection of marine reptiles and dinosaurs in Montana, the vast majority of animals that live during the Mesozoic are long gone, never to be ever found again. The odds are extremely slight that you would have been preserved as a fossil 
but it's only under these exceptional sets of circumstances that some things make it into the fossil record and eventually get found by us today. So it's a pretty rare thing and when you find something and you look at it, you go, wow, it's been a long trip, it's been a long journey, here you are, and that's what makes it all the more exciting. And they're right here in the middle of Montana, which is, well, pretty surprising and pretty amazing. Uh, a lot's changed in the last 70 million years.